there everybody and welcome to my Minecraft Bud explanation slash tutorial video. Uh, in this video I hope to cover all of the aspects of BUDs and block update detectors, well they're the same thing, um, inside Minecraft as this was something request, requested by a, um, by a subscriber. So yeah, let's get into it with explaining what actually a bud is. Um, as you just heard, a bud, which is B-U-D, stands for Block Update Detector, and it does exactly what it says on the title. Um, it can detect when a block has been updated. And what do I mean by updated? Um, well, there are a few ways to update a block. The most, the easiest one is to place a block or destroy a block and then the other main one is to power it using redstone or unpower it using redstone they're the two main ways um, you can also cause bud updates by um, pistons uh, fences and trapdoors so if I just power these in turn just get a repeater uh, where's the repeater? repeater, there we go so if I just power these like uh, like this, just connect them all up, uh, all of these will cause a uh, will cause an update on a block around it. So an update is basically just a change of state, um, and these are very very important in redstone. Um, so then, uh, buds are mainly used in pistons. They're not really used in just redstone and redstone torches, although you can get redstone buds um, when, like, for example, when a torch um, flickers out from being uh, powered by itself. If you have something like uh, like this, that can cause a bud. Like now that's off. If I replace that, it turns it back on again. That's sort of a bud, but that's not really used very much. Um, so yeah, let's just start by explaining how you normally power a piston. Oh, come on, place it right away. Okay. So now we normally have a piston like that, and we can power it by powering a block like that's directly touching it, or having redstone run directly into it, or by having the power source on the block next to it. So all of these methods work as a way of powering oops, powering a piston. But when using buds there's also another method. And this method is powering the block one above it. So at the moment this block is powered but the piston isn't extended. Um so this um so but we can uh, cause a bud um which will make this piston extend. Since this is powered, if we update the piston it, by uh, placing a block around it, it will then extend because this uh, this block here is powered. And now if we toggle this, nothing will happen. Um, so now if we turn it off and then we update the piston again, it closes. So that's basically what a block update detector is. Uh, this piston is detecting the block update from here, and then to update it, oop, wrong way. To update it, you would replace a block or for actually one second. If I just show you something else, you can also update it like this. Is another way of updating it. So now it's off, but this is still extended. So to update it, we can power the redstone next to it. Um, as you can see, this this isn't directly powering the block this actually updated the bud because uh, usually if I just place one this side redstone running parallel to a piston doesn't affect it whatsoever um, so yeah that's the basic bud that's how it works buds can also be formed if you power any one of these green blocks um, it doesn't have to be directly on top but it can be so it can be that one uh, or any ones to the side like that like one above at a uh, at a diagonal, so they're the um, what do you call it? The blocks which can be used to create a bud. So that's what a bud is and how you use them. Now this is um, like a real well not real life obviously but a usage of them. 
and this is uh, so this is our input like our data input so as you can see this block here is this block here so it's one which will cause it and now we need to update the piston by powering it powering the block below it that uh, that will update it and now there's an output and then if we turn it off and update it again there's no output and this uh, this little contraption Uh, this little contraption is called a D flip flop where you've got a data input and then you've also got like a save input so this is used in RAM um, so you've got some data coming through and on the clock cycle it's then saved into memory and then even if the data changes whatever start will not and then on the next cycle if a zero was coming through it, uh, it'll be saved again and then zero will be so sorry that's one if zero comes through and gets saved that will happen. So yeah, that's the D flip flop, and now I'll show you how this is used in RAM. Um, this is a really nice RAM design. It's two by two, tileable and stackable. Um, actually, I don't know which one's which, tileable or stackable, but yeah, I think it's tileable in both directions, um, which is very nice. And the way this works is, this is just your input on the top. Um, so if I just turn it on this gets turned on and as you can see this will cause a bud because it's one above the piston so uh, now we need to update it but we can't just place the block next to it because this is two by two so if this was stacked um, or tiled whatever if this type the next uh, the next piston would be there on two by two um, so we can't just place a uh, like a line going through here like that oops I didn't mean to update it but ah well um, you can't do that otherwise that would affect this piston and this piston and we only want to affect one like cell at a time uh, let me just restore this back to its original state okay so now it's on and uh, we use the piston extending method to update this bud so oop, if I can fly this piece of this red piece of wool is directly powering this piston as you can see it's non sticky so it won't pick up anything that would be over here um, so then we power it that extends this piston causing this piston to update and since it's receiving power when it updates it remains extended so that's like the memory cell that remembers what's in what's uh, what's been stored in RAM so that's your data input that's when you tell it to write and now um, is all about reading from memory so we don't want the output to display all of the time um, because we might not want that cell to um, be input into the ALU for example um, I know this is getting slightly off uh, slightly off buds but I'm sure it'll benefit people so yeah um, when this is extended this cuts off the power from here I did this glass because I didn't want it to be affected by this uh, by this torch so I put glass there this is always on so then that powers that and then that would power that if this was retracted but since it's extended it cuts the power meaning it's no longer powered from above the only place it is powered from is this line here so it is powered here so it's still extended and nothing is being output at the bottom but now if you say read from this cell we will get an output and so uh, that's not reading and that's reading now I'll just give you the demonstration of reading when there is nothing in memory so now there's nothing on the input we save that updates the piston that retracts allowing this um, this power to go through and power this piston so now it's been powered from two places powered by the yellow line and powered by the green if we say read nothing will be read because it's still getting power so nothing will be outputted and that's what we want because there's nothing stored in RAM in the memory sorry so so that's a really nice 2x2x16 two by two by RAM design you can use this as 2x2x14 two by, two by, by powering like having the input on this line but that means it's like up down up down instead of just a nice straight line 
Um, so yeah, that's how the RAM works. Um, and now we move on to. Let me just turn down the music. I can tell that's quite loud. Flipping neck. Um, I didn't mean to turn it off, but ah well. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Uh, now we move on to how to get rid of buds if we don't need them. Um, so if you wanted, if you had a situation where you wanted to power the block above, um, I'm not sure, like in a door or something. Um, you can use glowstone and glowstone will not create a bud so as you can see this is powered at the moment so if you place a block you'd expect this to be updated but it's not because the glowstone does not create a bud so either way nothing happens so yeah that's uh, that's the glowstone method um, and our, another property of glowstone is uh, it's just get some glowstone is if you power the something like this it, uh, ooh. What? oh yeah sorry um this is another property of redstone uh, of glowstone sorry if you power one like to the side of it like that that will not cause the block to extend and it will not cause a bud either so that's also useful like normally that would, but that's not really relevant to buds. But it's a nice property of glowstone, and that and uh, you can also use half slabs on there because half slabs have all the same properties as glowstone. Um, so that's glowstone and half slabs done. And the final thing is when um, you want to power something from above and you want it to extend. So when you don't want a bud. Um, so as you can see this now works as if we were powering the piston directly but what's actually happening is when this is on this causes the bud with here but that then also powers this fence and since the fence opens that effectively updates the piston causing it to extend and the same on the falling edge so when you turn it off on the falling edge that turns off causing the bud and then that updates it because it closes which then updates the piston and that's a really nice method of powering three pistons in a 3x3 door it's the way I use to make it so that no extra width has to be added on the side so if we have oops, something like this oh no damn it something like this the top two pistons retract and extend as you would expect. But now if we want all three to extend we can also put that there. So this being at a diagonal to here will cause a bud and then this will then um, activate it, well update it sorry, causing all three to extend simultaneously. And if you listen to the audio you can hear this um, opening just before the pistons extend you can definitely hear two sounds so yeah that's another really nice method uh, really nice use of buds and finally you can also use a trapdoor does the same thing as a fence gate although I don't really like trapdoors because you have to have this extra block here whereas fences are standalone if we destroy this block the uh, what do you call it the trapdoor breaks as well so I've covered what a bud is, uh, how to create one, some uses of them and how to get rid of them. Uh, I hope that has covered all of your bud questions if you had any. If you have enjoyed this video please like, comment and subscribe.